project this year. And I just want to start by saying that it did not at all go the way I thought it was going to go. And that this, well actually I started this Sunday, <laughs> so it's not done. But I needed to have a visual because this project, my favorite part about it was the hands-on aspect, the practical aspect, going into the garden and working with the plants and doing all the things with my hands that I did. Then all the stuff about the, the theories and all of that and how I thought I was going to journal about it and have, you know, slides that could explain with like comic strips and biographies and all these diagrams. That didn't happen. So, uh, so I decided I needed to have something physical, somewhere where I could really condense everything that I learned, how I felt about what I'd learned. Um, and so like I said, I, I started this project because, well I haven't said this yet, but I'm interested in ecology, sustainability, this is something that has always been an interest for me, I've always loved plants, I used to give my friends biology lessons, if you haven't talked, if you're out there, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> plants with like band-aids on them and stuff. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, but it's always been something that's part of me, something that was just fascinating because you could just you could just grow things on your own in a way that, um, that you can't do with a lot of other stuff. Um, and plants, you know, propagations. This entire year has just been me walking around with my friend Miana, clipping off pieces of plants, putting them in jars in the common room, hiding behind plants, keeping plants. I have like 24 plants in my room right now. I don't, I can't even fit them anymore. Um, but anyway, I was at the parcel trip last year, which is something that you do in 11th grade, and I went and worked on the farm there, and there was this intern, and he, well, he, so he didn't really like school, and he said he was glad that he got to just work with, you know, cows all day, and that sounded really fantastic to me, um, really, you know, hit it off, but, um, he was talking to me about compost, and I was like, you don't need to explain things to me, I know what's up, but I realized that it was actually very shallow, my knowledge. I could reference, you know, the usual cow horns, 500, 501 preparations, but I didn't really know what it meant. And I realized it's something I really wanted to pursue, because it just seems, what I knew about Biden and farming just seemed like, a way of getting into agriculture and into farming that just takes into account every single aspect of nature and of everything that's, you know, how everything works. Um, and it just seemed, it just seemed very common sense almost and just a very perfect way to approach this, this thing, agriculture, which is really the basis of so much of everything that we have today. That's, agriculture was just the biggest thing that people did for years and years. And now I think um, there's a lot of issues with it because we've developed a lot of different ways to fertilize the soil and people are not quite as in tune with, with the macro cosmic um, way to grow food. So that was my interest. Um, so last May, I showed up at the garden, at the Pfeiffer Garden down the road and I, I told Megan who works there uh, I want to learn biodynamics. I like plants. And she's like, well, what aspect do you want to learn? I was like, all of it. And she's like, it's a lot of stuff. Um, and it really was. And I, I didn't realize how much stuff I'd learned until, until I was putting this project together. And I was like, well, how do I show all of this to everyone? Because I know I know a lot. I was doing the, I did the agriculture course, which is 13 workshops throughout the year. Eight hour days, half of it is like the theoretical, we're all sitting in a room talking about Steiner and his ideas, um, and half of it is more practical, you know, stuffing intestines with uh, chamomile flowers and pruning trees and stuff like that, um, which makes sense to me. <laughs> um, but, right, so I didn't, I didn't, wasn't sure how to bring this, and I think I'll just go into a little bit of the details of what dynamic means to me and then really just open it up for questions if anyone's, you know, curious. Why the cow horns? Why the intestines? <laughs> uh, what is the animal and the plant aspect and what do they bring to each other? So, Biodynamics was created by Rudolf Steiner in 1924. It was actually it was the first organic initiative um, ever, I think. 
and it was requested by the farmers because they realized that commercial fertilizers and pesticides that they were using were their soil was being depleted and their livestock was not quite as happy and they said, well Steiner, you have all these ideas about schools and stuff, what can you tell us about agriculture, this essential thing. Um, and so Steiner, a lot of it was theoretical, but in his book he, he tells the farmers, you know, don't just believe me at face value, you know, just take these things that I suggest and apply them to your farm and see how it works. And so there's this one book, which is actually the only book I read. I had a lot of other books, um, Knowledge of Higher World, all sorts of fun stuff that I didn't quite get into. Um, but so this book is just called Agriculture. I love it. It's green. Agriculture. Golden letters. Um, and it's just the lectures that Rudolf Steiner was giving. And in it, he describes what he thinks would be the best approach at being able to use the earth while also enhancing it, and not just using, you know, the resources around us to, to eat them, to support us, but trying to work with them and trying to renew and enhance them while they enhance us, and how that relationship would ultimately just flow in this in this wonderful way. Uh, so one of the first things I understood about biodynamics is in this example that Steiner gives. Uh, he he explains that it's, well. It's a metaphor, but he has a compass needle. He says, you have a compass, there's a needle in it, and it points north. And everyone knows this, and it points north because the magnetic forces are working on the needle. Outside forces are working, making it work, it's connected to the poles, and no one would be like, yeah, that thing points north because it's a piece of metal, that's what it does. Um, and this makes sense to a lot of people, but once you start thinking about plants, a lot of people start looking inside of it and cutting, you know, cutting a beet and looking inside and finding all these proteins and these little bits of stuff and they're like, this is what the beet is about. But what Biodynamics tries to do and be like, well, this is true. I mean, the needle is magnetized, iron is a more receptive metal or whatever. The beet is a certain combination of elements, but that's just, that's the very consequence of all the things that are happening around it. So. In biodynamics, you start looking at the soil around it. And how is the soil doing? And then you look at the air and the landscape, and how is that doing? And how is the wildlife working all around it? And it goes all the way out to the moon. Because, I mean, the moon, everyone knows, influences the tide. It influences some um, mental illnesses. It influences women's menstrual cycles. It has a lot of influences. and. He decides, well, Steiner just goes out even farther. He's like, why stop at the moon? Because we are a planet, and there's other planets out there, and they're all, you know, they're all spinning together, they're all interconnected, and that is why the beat is the way it is. So, this is where a lot of people think that biodynamics is just organic farming of planets, which seems a little unnecessary. Why wouldn't you just stick to organic? Well, I don't know. I just think what Biodynamics is trying to do is unite the idea of science in agriculture and this spirituality in nature. In nature, you go out and you can go out and look at the trees and be like, yeah, I know they're working because of like photosynthesis things and like there's stuff going on inside it and this all makes sense. But why did they decide to be alive in the first place? What is this will? What is this? force that makes everything work together, besides just the scientific. And I think that's what's very hard to explain, and I think it's what a lot of people are looking for in their lives and all sorts of stuff. A lot of people believe, you know, people have souls, and why are we conscious? Why are we, why don't we just give up, you know, stop and say, like, what is it all for? There is this thing that could be described as a life force, maybe, or a will, a life will, if you will. Um, <laughs> and this is what I was trying to figure out in biodynamics, and I realized this is what they were trying to unite, and this, I think this makes sense. So, I wasn't sure if I was even going to present today, to be perfectly honest, this morning I got out of my shower, um, and I was in the bathroom, 
no, I was in the kitchen crying with my mom, and then she told me that even if I don't have notes, even if I don't have books and examples specifically, I can just talk about my experience with this project because I know, I know I did so much for it. I went to the garden every Monday, I went there every Wednesday with the Neighbor to Neighbor program, and we I took care of the horses and you know, picked carrots and beets and uh, put on, cut hay and put it on wagons in 80 degree weather and helped build their tool shed and pruned trees and did all this, this fantastic stuff working with the soil. And the whole time, you know, Megan was there talking to me and interns, Christian, um, Dylan, all sorts of people came and went. And, you know, we'd be there thinning carrots, which is like, you want to spread it out so that they don't. Um, come into each other and just talking about different things and picking up different things about biodynamics and I just realized that this is a community of people who are trying this method which wasn't necessarily, I mean it took a lot of courage to be like okay well we have this man here and he's telling us this might work and we're going to try it and a lot of it doesn't make sense at you know at first you're like well why am I burning up skins of raccoons and like sprinkling them around and what does that mean and why do I have to stuff a deer bladder with you know but <laughs> um, but it it's just the will to try it and I think a lot of it has to do with the intent of these people we're like well I love this earth and I respect this earth and I realize that I'm not trying to just use it I'm trying to work with it and that's that's really what dynamics was all about for me, just listening, catching on, looking at things, sometimes getting very confused. I'd be like, well, no, this plant is growing because it has a root system, there's water, there's sun, like, don't tell me it has spiritual energies in it. But I look at the plant, and you, it's just the feeling of the plant, and why it's growing, and how it's doing it, is really incredible. Everything to the seasons. I mean, seasons don't just happen because they're seasons. Seasons happen because the, you know, the sun is at a certain distance, and then the earth is spinning. So everything that's happening here is a cosmic consequence. And to imagine that there's a cosmic presence in a tiny plant is perfectly reasonable, because that's where it's coming from. I have two minutes. OK, well, um, I'll talk a little bit about this, maybe. Dynamics. On your farm, you have animals, you have humans, and you have plants. And you try to make them work together because, I mean, there's like minerals and that's in the soil, but they're, they're not alive. Um, what I tried to do here is kind of condense how I felt about biodynamics by starting with different, um, right, well, the entire outside is supposed to be kind of the cosmos, everything that we don't really know about yet, um, and that's influencing the inside. This here is the greenhouse at the Piper Center. Um, the seed is on the inside. You can't see it, but it's in there. Um, yeah, so this is the plants. And the plants, they're rooted into the ground, and they, they're they not free at all. So they're very susceptible to, to the air outside environment. Everything that's happening around them influences them, and that's how they work, because they can't, they can't choose. They just take everything in. And here it was supposed to go into animals. I'm not done with this. Shout out to Miana for like doing so much of this. She walked in one day. I was like, she was like, it was Sunday night. She was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm making art for my project. So your project is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all of this. Um, animals happening here. Animals, freedom of their, you know, of their movement, but they're still very connected in their, in their mentally to influences of the world. Um, and this is going to be the humans, we're not done yet, um, which is kind of meaningful if you think about it. We are completely not even present. Um, I don't know if it's deconstructed or yet, maybe it's a futuristic vision, hopefully not. Um, but how we have an emancipated will, we have an emancipated mind, and how we need to go back and learn about nature again. And that way we can go on beyond try to figure out what's happening here with some aliens. I believe it by dynamics is the key to connecting to the aliens. <laughs> I want to hear about that later. Um, right. So that's that's what this is. And I think that's that's all
all my time. If anyone has specific questions about, well, anything. What have you heard about biodynamics? What are you confused about? What can I tell you a little bit more about in a way that is comprehensive? Joseph, 
you have any aspirations to be a professional biodynamic farmer? <laughs> you are? Uh, yeah, I actually aspire to uh, work at the co-op and be a biodynamic farmer on my free time. No. Um, <laughs> that's what I am doing. Um, maybe, definitely something that I want to undertake at some point. Maybe take a few years and like, be a hermit for a while <laughs> and just grow things. That I really like. But my favorite part of this project was the practical aspect, and that's why I don't have physical things to show. It was just me understanding why I loved everything that was growing. I don't understand. It just, it just happens there. And it's just this forgiving thing that happens all around us and that doesn't really judge and that's not that's not conscious in the way that we are, but somehow it's find a way to be more balanced. I mean, you're never going to be a plant that's like, oh, I'm so stressed right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Uh, see, your projects are coming up, you know? And they're all, they're all 